me. I am a advent of code video recording robot. Welcome to day 10. Okay, anyways, day 10. This is, uh, I thought this one was kind of fun, but it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward if you can think of a few small little tricks of how to keep track of stuff and you don't try and do things like regex or something crazy like that okay so in this one basically like there's these idea of opening closing parents brackets curly braces or curly parents but i saw someone on twitter say that and that just seems crazy to me i mean they're curly braces and then there's angle brackets or angle braces or less than or greater than so i don't know however you'd like to read these out loud i'll just uh point to them Anyways, a valid sequence opens and closes correspondingly, just like a normal balanced way that you would use these. It is not allowed to do things where you try and close a chunk with the wrong character. Okay, so this is bad because these two don't close each other. This one's also bad um, because this one never gets closed, etc., etc. So basically, your input is just a bunch of these lines, and then you're going to try and find the ones that are corrupted. You can leave the ones that are incomplete, just the ones that are corrupted, which means that something on the line is busted. So for part one, that's all you're trying to do. And then what you want to do is find the first illegal character whoops, on each line and then basically say, OK, how many points am I going to add for that? And then you're going to keep on adding these all up to a certain number of points. And then you want to get the total score. So this is not crazy hard. What I did is I basically made a little map so I could easily check which character goes with which. I've got openers and closers. So I read in the line or read in the file for each line. What I do, I keep an accumulator. So I'm folding each result of each line back into the accumulator, right? So if on the first line, it doesn't have any values, it just returns zero. Totally fine. It'll just return the accumulator back and it'll keep going till it finds some problem, which is what happens in this logic, which we'll get to shortly. And when we find the problem here, we're going to add some number. Here basically okay so that's the main outline of what happens so what we do is we go and we iterate over each of the charts so if we look at 10 dot uh, example right we're basically going to go over each of these separate different characters one at a time we say okay if it's an opener right so if it's in this openers thing here then what we're going to do is we're going to push that onto the stack so we've got a stack which has basically the stack of things that openers that we have encountered thus far when we find a closer, right, so something that's supposed to close one of these chunks, then we're going to say, okay, so we get the last one and we find out what uh, the last complete thing is. So if the last one is the complete thing, right, so if it's like, okay, we're, if we found the last one and we get the matching completion one, so that we have a nice little closed parentheses here, and we just say, okay, this one's good, and we pop it off the stack and we keep going to the next characters. Otherwise, that means we've encountered something that's wrong. So this means, like, we saw a curly or like a bracket here, but what we were hoping for was a curly brace. And so then what we'll see is we've got this curly brace here. And then we say, okay, we found a curly brace. We were hoping for a bracket, but we got a curly brace. And we need to add this 1197. And then notice that this is a fold, right? So we're going to accumulate these up and we're going to keep on adding these numbers. Supposing we find no broken things. So that's if we either had an incomplete line, which is acceptable in the problem statement, or we uh, just it was actually closed correctly, then we're just going to return the accumulator that we were doing. Right, so that's what fold does is it keeps on putting that accumulator back in, and that's the whole answer for part one. So you find all the broken lines by doing this. Part two is very similar, and except that now instead of dealing with the corrupted lines, we're going to deal with the incomplete lines. Okay, and so the basic scenario here is we need to figure out complete by adding these numbers. So this is where it's like, wow, we chose the right data structure here because we're going to need to basically keep on popping off the stack. That's what we're going to do. And then we there's some really complicated way of scoring these numbers all together. It doesn't super matter, but basically you're going to multiply some stuff together based on which things need to get completed. That's not the super cool part. The super cool part is that you need to be remembering in what order you need to close things in to basically complete the lines. So let's look at part two. Same strategy here for open and closers, right? We got these open and closers. This time we use a nice little trick in Rustland called filter map. Okay. And we basically copy and paste the logic that we had above 
except instead of doing this accumulator stuff here, what we're going to do is we actually just say return none. So filter map, if it gets a none value, it just discards that item. So this leaves us to basically just do only items here that are either complete or incomplete. No corrupted lines. So we get to here. If we don't, if we have one that's uh, not great, if we have it greater than zero, then we're going to do the rest of this. I didn't, at least in my problem statement, have any lines that were actually good. So this was perfectly fine to do this way. You might have had one and then maybe you don't have to have this panic, but that doesn't really matter. So now we do another trick here. We're going to take the stack that we have left. We're going to iterate over it and then we reverse it because of the way that they say what we need to do for this problem statement here because we want to go from the back end of the stack to the front. We're going to fold it. Same strategy. A lot of stuff can be solved by folding in advent of code. And we do this accumulator. And what we're going to do is we're going to do accumulator times five because that's what it tells us to do. Just take times five for stuff. Okay. Each time. And then multiplied by whatever the character is. There's like one, two, three, and four. And this one's not possible. These are the only ones that are working. So we scoop all of those up into the value. And then this gets right. So what we did was we filter mapped this. So for none, we're just discarding those. That's the corrupted lines. For the incomplete lines, we put inside of our iterator now some value with this number. And what it says is find the middle value by sortedness. I, I don't know what the significance of that value would be, but basically you've got an iterator. Then I say we need to sort this iterator. And then I collect it to a vector so that I can know the length. And then I say, hey, what's in the middle of scores? And that's it. That's your solution for part two. So very similar to part one. It was good that we were using a stack because this same sort of strategy worked both times. It just changed to be that instead of finding out what the first one was broken, we have to basically pop each of the things off the stack until our stack is emptied. So with that, I hope you enjoyed day 10 of Advent of Code. You know, smash the sub button, give it a like. It's rust. I mean, I feel like you kind of have to, right? Thanks, everybody. I'll see you later.